Okay, so here's another problem where we need to list the sides and angles of the triangle in order from least measure to greatest measure. And I will call this more of a medium problem. So the first problem I did was an easy one. This is more of a medium one. So as we can see, we've been given measures for these angles, but you know, angle E is 2x plus 11 degrees, angle G is 9x plus 4 degrees, and angle F is 3x minus 3 degrees. So what we need to do is we need to solve for x and then find the measures of the angles. Then we can list them in order from least measure to greatest measure. And then given those angles, we can list the sides in order from least measure to greatest measure. So remember, what do the measures of all the angles sum to in a triangle? That's 180 degrees. So this is actually pretty straightforward. All we need to do is say, well, the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle G plus the measure of angle F equals 180. So we'll just write that down. So 2x plus 11 plus 9x plus 4 plus 3x minus 3 equals 180. Okay, and then we're just going to solve for x. So we're going to combine like terms here. So I have an x, two, uh, 2x, 9x, and 3x. So that's going to sum to 14x. Okay, and then I sometimes like to use other colors. So then I've got an 11, a 4, and a negative 3. And so that, I'll go back to black here, sums to 12. Okay, and that equals 180. Then I'm just going to subtract 12 from both sides. And then I end up with 14x equals 168. And then to solve for x, I just divide both sides by 14. Check your later 14s. And 168 divided by 14 is going to equal 12. Okay, so x equals 12. Are you done? Nope. Remember, it's asking us to list the sides and the angles. So we're listing the sides and the angles. Okay, so many students, they kind of go on autopilot and they just think, oh, every problem in math is solved for x. It's not. A lot of times we're asking you to solve for x, yes, but then use that value of x to solve for something else or to figure something else out. So now what we need to do is we need to find the measure of each angle. So remember, we know that the measure of angle E is 2x plus 11, okay? So we can e easily substitute 12 in for x, and we know that the measure of angle E is going to be 2 times 12 plus 11, which is 24 plus 11, which is 35. Okay, so the measure of angle E is 35. <clears throat> Whoa, went a little crazy there with the E. Let me see here. There's my eraser. Oh, that's too big. You know what? We're just going to leave it. <laughs> okay, that's an E. All right, now let's find the measure of... I'm just going to box it so I can see it more clearly here. Now let's find the measure of angle G. So the measure of angle G... And we all know angle G over here is 9x plus 4 degrees. So it's 9x plus 4. Okay. Then what we're going to do is just substitute, because we know x is 12, substitute it in. So 9 times 12 plus 4. Okay. So 9 times 12 is going to be what? Good, it's 108, okay, plus 4, okay, so then 108 plus 4 is going to be 112. Oh, something, I just realized I forgot degrees, that's 35 degrees, okay, so the measure of angle G is 112 degrees, good, and then we have one more to go. So now we're looking at the measure of angle F. So the, for the measure of angle F, we know that the measure of angle F is 3x minus 3 degrees. 
we substitute in 12 for x. It's going to be 3 times 12 minus 3 which I'm just going to do this quickly since I'm running out of room here. We all know that 3 times 12 is 36. 36 minus um, 3 is going to be 33. Okay, so the measure of angle F. Oops, that should have been a lowercase m there. The measure of angle F is 33. Okay, so now if we're going to list the angles and sides of a triangle in order from least measure to greatest measure. Remember on the previous one I said it's really good to just kind of label things. So I would do angles. Okay. And then I'm going to write it below since I don't really have room next to here. So the smallest is 33 degrees and that's angle F. So angle F. Okay. And then the next smallest angle is going to be the 35 degree angle which is angle E. And then that leaves us with angle G, which is 112 degrees, as the largest angle. Perfect. And then I would box that. I know we've boxed other things kind of going along, but I would also box this nice and big. And you can either, I've had students that will do like bubbles around it, like this. I'm kind of running out of room. There we go. And I'm always like, oh, that's awesome, because then I clearly know. That that's one of the answers. Good. Um, and then we need to do the sides. So remember that the smallest angle is opposite the shortest side. So because angle F is the smallest angle, we go over here and look for the side opposite that. And if I show you in red here, whoops, um, I go opposite angle F and boom, I'm on this side and this is side EG, okay? So EG is your shortest side. Boom, and don't forget your hats, good. And then the next smallest angle is angle E, okay? So if I use a different color and I say, okay, what side's opposite angle E? Boom, hits right here, and that's going to be side GF. Perfect. And then the largest side, okay, is going to be opposite the largest angle, which is angle G. So I look at angle G right here and I go opposite it and I see, I see side EF. So let me write that down. E. F. Okay? So, and again, what I said was, after you're done, make sure you make it really obvious that that's your answer. So we'll put these this big kind of bubble around it. Perfect. And if I were a teacher, I'd be like, awesome, they showed me where the answer was. Because um, otherwise, there's work all over the place, and your teacher might have trouble finding your answer. Um, perfect. So, Again, we listed the angles in order, and it was angle F is the smallest, angle E is the second smallest, and angle G is the largest. And then for the sides, EG was the shortest, GF was the middle, and EF was the longest. And again, remember, notice this if we compare, because I do think it's important, because it's a triangle, so there are only three vertices, so we're only dealing with three letters, what you know is to find the opposite side, because I know sometimes in a triangle it can be confusing depending on how it looks, you know? Look at this, angle F, and then look at the side, EG, okay? So you know if you're having trouble finding the opposite side, you know, well, if it's opposite angle F, the side is not going to include the letter F. And again, look at that with E, and then for the side it's GF, so it doesn't include G, uh, doesn't include E, and then over here, G, angle G, the opposite side is going to be EF, and again, there's no G in that, okay? So that's how you know, because it's a triangle, so if you're using two of the letters to name the side, when you need to go opposite, okay, there's only going to be one letter left, and it's going to be the one you didn't use, okay? Very good.